So Jimmy Fallon is uh, the latest uh, culprit in what is we're calling toxic workplace behavior, which is the new Me Too for Hollywood. But it's yeah. more egalitarian, yeah. right? Because women have been hit with mean to allegations. Ellen DeGeneres yeah. got that. As well, right? Kelly Clarkson, yeah. Ellen DeGeneres got it. Um, yeah. Who else? I mean, a bunch of them. I mean, now uh, Lizzo got Lizzo. It. Yeah. yeah, I guess you could say Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon just got Lizzoed. Yes, he, he got Lizzoed with no bananas. No bananas involved. In but none one. of it was sexual. No. But now a toxic workplace environment, you can get canceled for that. Yeah. If you thought that Jimmy Fallon wasn't a toxic yeah. jerk yeah. Uh, just by watching how he acts in his show, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you should have seen that coming. I will say everyone sees the way yeah. that Jimmy Fallon laughs at jokes is like he there's no life behind his eyes. <laughs> the, like there's not a soul in looks there. like SSRIs just in, yeah. In his eyes. But really, it's they're saying that he's hung over a lot of the time on set or he's mm. just straight up drunk. I will say I would rather be um, abused by a drunk <laughs> Jimmy Fallon than have to watch Jimmy Kimmel cry one more time right i hate he's watching a very Jimmy teary cry. guy he is he's annoying. he's very sensitive but <laughs> there's a 20 dollar one there uh romy romy said maromi maromi said for john malin back godlike back fiendish fiendishcomic.com there you go um anyway these former employees mm. for jimmy fallon are coming out to say uh you never knew what you were gonna get with jimmy fallon it was a good Jimmy day or a bad Jimmy day. And yeah. some days he would just yell at people, castigate people without cause and emotionally, verbally abuse them. So what happens and when these grown ass charge. adults yeah. are deciding to go to the media about it without, you know, putting their names out there yeah. because or they're just worried quit. about losing other opportunities just in quit. television. But I mean, for them, they say this was their dream job. Working on a late Working night show is their dream job. And I was like, if that's your dream yeah. job, like think bigger, <laughs> yeah. dream bigger. Have you ever had, a, ever had a boss that was just like awful? See, I worked in a family business for oh, so, so many years. Didn't have to, didn't have to do so, that. I, I don't know. My, my dad was pretty rough on me when it came to. I mean, I've heard stuff, working for so. fa like working for families actually worse. It, like a lot of times. arguably. Yeah. yeah, he was he was harder on me than than anyone else that worked there. He expected perfection out of me. And damn it, I delivered. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> yeah. Right. But dad didn't show up drunk to work. So oh, no, it's OK. So you're good. Not. You're good. As long as like the standard is just like don't show up wasted to your to your job and you should be fine. The question is, mm -hmm. is Jimmy Fallon actually toxic? Or are his employees just whiny babies? Both. I, and yeah. both can be true both. at the same yeah. time. Absolutely both. Yeah. Like, I'm sure he's absolutely awful, and I'm sure they're whiny babies. Yes. This mm -hmm. says, uh, employees say they had nightmares relating to work and were in constant states of fear. One former employee says they had their first anxiety attack while working on the show and were put on anti-anxiety medication for the first time. Another employee says they felt physical ramifications of their declining mental health, like their hair thinning and weakened nail beds. <laughs> Four other employees say they're in therapy because of their experiences. And yeah. three people Crying say rooms. they experience suicidal ideation as a result of the working there's environment. A, there's a $20 one there from Half Big Treehouse. Uh, hey gang, late as always and apropos, the culture war, Brett needs to tell Beanie Man that he might have to get someone else to moderate the show. Hi, Mary. Since the second T is silent, I figured I'd hide it too. That look, Brett was look, stop spelling my name wrong. Oh stop it. God. Look, I... I'm fine with just whatever. You want to be mean to me? That's fine. But at least be mean to me with the proper name. It's not Brent. And there's a second T. It's, Brent with one T isn't a real thing. That's fake. No. It's not real. And Brent is just Brett, but you sneezed when you named your do kid. Do you need to go to the crying room? Yes, I do. I yeah. need it's the right, crying room. It's right, right over there. there. It's the, right over there. The, the crying boiler room. That's like, yeah. They had, they had crying rooms and they have weakened well, nail they, beds. They call the dressing rooms for the guests the crying rooms where they go to express their fifis about how mean Jimmy Fallon is He's to just, them. Um, I just can't imagine. <laughs> they say, mentally, I was at the lowest place of my life. I didn't want to live anymore. Mm. I thought about taking my own life all the time. What? I knew deep down I would never actually do it. But oh in my, my head, God. I'm like, why do I think about this all the time? So, so the idea here is like, okay, so here's here's suicide. Right. Right here. Here's quitting your job. Right. You just skip right over and go okay. to... 
that's my my big point on this. Yeah. It's like at some point in time, it's like you have to take the responsibility to leave. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just go. Like, I mean, there's there's more to life than a job. I, I, I know that's easier said than done, but like it's like, you know, you, you don't need to be in a job that if that's true, I, I I kind of yeah. I'm saying about like this, like but. this is an extreme example, right? Like we're saying like we're not saying that your boss is being unduly mean to you because uh, uh, you stayed four minutes late for lunch or something like that. We're saying you literally feel like you want to end your life. You have to take responsibility for your own actions. We and do know something because about of the writer's it. strike that these are yeah. some of the most fragile victims. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And their industry is incredibly cutthroat and they're not made for it. They can't right. do it. There's a $20 one there from Android 33. Uh, you got says, that one? I would rather be trapped in, I mean, work in John Malin's basement. <laughs> there right. you go. There you go. I mean, he probably gives you at least a bowl of water. I, I, I mean, but really, <laughs> I've, I've worked through a lot of bad gigs um, with abusive I, I hate using the word abusive, but you know, people that w would rewrite the script after it's drawn, you know, and yeah. I'd have to go back and redo stuff. And it's like, I'm not getting paid to go back now. I'm just, you know, and I, I would just muscle through the job and then not work with them again. I, yeah. I know that's easier said than done, but like, I mean. Comic I, book artists can't strike. No, <laughs> not really, because we're Wait, freelancers. A, we just end up we just end up looking for another gig. They love to say that too. They say you can't be mad at me for driving the customers away. I'm a freelancer. Yeah, I don't work for Marvel. I just put Marvel in my bio. Yeah, and then yell at everyone. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and here's the thing: it's Hollywood. It's big money. It's high pressure. Uh, they're delivering content on a daily basis. Right. It's going to be, it's a, It's like uh, they say, what, what is it? Like, uh, takes a, you have to crack a few eggs if you want to make an omelet, except for it's production assistant heads. And yeah. they're going like this. You chose to work in that industry. I'm not saying that Jimmy Fallon's not a douche. He's a douche. And I said, I would have a lot more sympathy if he wasn't part of the lecturing late night class of people that are absolutely awful and trying to divide America. Is he good enough at what he does to treat his underlings no. that badly? Nobody should be doing that at all. They are acting like that. They just, yeah. you know, avoid eye contacts in case he flies off the handle. <laughs> it's just, it's just it's, I can't picture him hitting anyone though. What I found more, more often than not is every time we cover something in Hollywood, I just end up saying like, I don't like this person, but these people suck too, so you know they deserve each other. High Voltage seventy five no. said, "I never got Jimmy Fallon. I challenge you to think of a single project, show, piece of entertainment that was made more enjoyable by his presence." But people really liked him on SNL, which is why he ascended to this level. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. he pawned off his uh, first late night show to Seth, Seth Meyers. Yeah, no, yeah. Way. Or is it Seth not, Meyer. I don't know. Also not funny. Also not funny. The late night hosts um, are also starting a podcast together. I don't know if you guys heard about that. They're starting a podcast. Strike Force Five. It's called Strike Force Five, and they're giving the proceeds from that podcast, whatever money it does make, to the striking writers. Implying um, it'll make money. <laughs> implying it can or will make any money. I don't know how. There's just there's there's no point in any of this where I'm just like you. It's not excusing their behavior. It's saying that you're responsible for your own actions. And if you're unhappy, just go. Yeah. yeah. File a complaint and leave. I mean, this well, seems <laughs> passive aggressive, yeah. right? Like how many years of the, and they're all just coming forward now? This is how people realize that like introducing a DEI department of any company doesn't actually mean they're introducing like guidelines that will help people work together and have harmonious relationships. It's just to avoid liability for the studio that is in charge. Right. That's what it's about. That's what well, HR is about. Yeah, human resources, that's all they're there is to protect the company, <laughs> not the employees. They're not guidance counselors. It's also right. extremely utopian to think that it's just gonna work out better. It's, it's like when Olivia Wilde was making her movie and they, they're, they're like, look at, go crazy. She's just as awful as a male director. Like uh, that happens, right? It's not, a, it's not a male trait to be awful. It's a human trait to be awful. <laughs> And, uh, and it's going to happen no matter what, especially in these industries. Like I said, high pressure, you have deadlines to meet every day. And there are a few things I like, I've talked to people who have worked on the set. There's few places less funny than the set of a comedy. When, when being funny is your job, you it's turn into a bit of it's a sociopath. Awful. It's awful. So, right? <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going 
throw you across a parking lot. Just because I love what about Bob doesn't mean he should be allowed to throw people across a parking lot. I don't think he can if he tried, no. but still, you can't threaten people like that. So, I'm no big fan of Jimmy Fallon or even late night shows. Like, I, I've never been the guy that watches those um, religiously, but th I do understand the concept, and, and there's a lot of pressure on whoever the show is surrounding, yes. okay? And I, I'm not trying to take his side on this, but the dude, like, let's pretend like he, he, he bombs out one night or a week. He, he just can't get the jokes out, and... All these people around him, their jobs rely on that him, show's success. Yeah. And I mean, that is a burden that either on a subconscious level or it's a reality, yes. you know, he's aware of uh, and, and that maybe would drive. I, I'm Again, I'm not defending him. I'm yeah, just, like, that is you, that is something that's not being brought up by these people. It's understandable pressure when, when that much yeah. rise, when your name is on the marquee and you have to deliver each and every, each and every night, that's not an easy thing to do. But at a certain point, you know, like it did, I wonder if these stories ever came out about Leno or Letterman, right? I, if the if they did, we're in a different time. We're yeah. in a social media time where people can kind of get this, that information out a lot different. So I think, I think there were a couple of stories about Letterman that came out. I could I could see it, but I yeah, I don't remember it. anything about yeah. Leno at least. Yeah, he got half his face burned off. And he was like <laughs> the nicest guy ever, still, right? Um, Met this, those two those two twins that he'd never heard of before. Who are those guys? The Da Vinci twins. <laughs> <laughs> the Da Vinci twins. I don't remember their actual Just Hans names. and Franz for the but new in generation. This Rolling Stone piece, they also rehashed how Jimmy Fallon got canceled for doing blackface in an impersonation of Chris Rock. Yeah. Um, in 2000. That. So this came out, this got resurfaced in the summer of 2020. And some of his... Uh, you know, millennial and Gen Z employees were not aware that this ever happened. But it was their very dream job. They felt very unsafe, yeah. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And this is when the showrunner at the time implemented their internal diversity and culture meetings. Wait till they uh, find then, out what Kimmel Surprise, did on the surprise, show. there were no lasting changes made after they introduced a bureaucratic department yeah. to ensure mm -hmm. everyone feels included. Yep. Another reason to go independent is uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, bureaucratic departments running everything. That's a that's another big Why reason that all this. Why isn't there like a countercultural late night show? That there is. It's supposed to be Greg Gutfield. And it's, nah. mm. uh, is it like? I mean, is it really? What, does it look like that? Because it, I don't think it is. It's Alex meant Stein to. now. <laughs> Alex Stein can be countercultural. Is it? Because I think of Alex Stein as more of like performance art meets like Jerry Springer meets. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm uh, still, I'm, it still blows my mind that, that Springer was a politician. I never knew that. He was? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Like, I didn't know that till this year. Yeah. Hmm. That's, that's insane. You know what's funny is um, Chris Rock probably would still think that Jimmy Fallon's blackface was funny. He had a, he had but a because really... his white millennial employees don't yeah. think it's funny, he gets canceled for it. You see the bit that's been going around of Chris Rock uh, talking about Lululemon? <laughs> he talks about he's like hundred and twenty dollar uh, yoga pants, but they're anti racist because Lululemon says anti racist uh, on their like outside their stores. He goes, I think I speak for everybody and say I'd rather have some racist ass twenty dollar, yeah, <laughs> twenty dollar yeah, yeah, yoga yeah. pants. <laughs> yeah. There's a fifty dollar one there from John Malin. Uh, excellent show. Great job, Shane. Hi, Mary. Brett. Smiley face. And he spelled my name right, so thank you right. for that. Right. <laughs> thank you for that. You got it right. Yeah, That's he'd hope. rather have some. And then I, w I was actually told that supposedly, like, the guy who made Lululemon did it because he thinks it's funny that Asian people can't pronounce it. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Isn't that <laughs> Did you insane? know about the Lululemon murder? Oh, at the store. Yeah, yeah. at the store. Uh, yeah, uh, what, uh, a, a lady a, killed a lady in a Lululemon But there were two store. employees. <laughs> they were in a, in a fight. At, like, there were two employees, and she, like, sh I don't know. It was a very brutal murder. And, that, and people could hear it from next door. <laughs> but they what? didn't do anything. What were the employees fighting over? I don't even know. I'm looking it up. Lululemon murder. I don't even know what they were fighting about. So here it is. The Lululemon murder occurred on March 11th, uh, 2011 at a Lululemon Athletica store located in Washington, D.C. Oh, sorry, a uh, suburb of Bethesda. Uh, Brittany Norwood, 
That's not when that far she, away from us. I wonder if she's us. related to Brandy Norwood, the singer. That'd be cool. Uh, a store work. Oh, no. She, never mind. Not cool. She's the one who uh, murdered her. Oh, no. She murdered her co-worker, yeah. Jaina Troxel Murray. The case received widespread media coverage and it was commonly referred to as the Lululemon murder. She was sentenced to life in prison. She's going to be hanging out with Danny Masterson. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's Ghislaine Maxwell turns to you and she's like, what are you in for? <laughs> <laughs> a manager arrived in the morning to find the door unlocked, merchandise, merchandise strewn about the floor, mannequins in disarray. She would hear someone moaning near the back of the store. Frightened, she asked a man outside to help her search the store. He found Jaina Murray lying uh, in a back hallway, face down in a pool of blood with a ligature around her neck. Brittany Norwood was found in the bathroom, apparently semi-consciousness with zip ties. Across. Oh, she tried to like. She like faked her own. Oh, she wasn't. Man. She wanted it to seem like a store break-in. Oh. Yeah, like someone tried to loot the store and killed them. But that's, that's crazy. you know. So so Jimmy Fallon. No, nobody's out. died at Jimmy Fallon at late night. So, so he's count got that your going. Blessings. For him. Can't be that bad. Yeah. Okay. Can't be that like bad. You, you're not in the back room of one of those crying rooms, you know, with your hands zip tied. He's also now apologized to his Tonight Show staffers on a very awkward Zoom meeting, saying it's embarrassing and I feel so bad. Sorry if I embarrassed you or your family and friends. I feel so bad. I can't even tell you. Uh, I want this show to be fun. It should be inclusive for everybody. It should be funny. It should be the best show. The best. The best people. What does the best show? The best. <laughs> what does what the hell does inclusion have to do with it? I don't know. There were no claims I, of racism on set or no, sexism. He's got that weirdly enough. Him. No, I, I feel everyone like, was treated like shit equally. <laughs> I feel like that was preemptive. He's like, oh, before the other accusations come out, let me just throw that word there out go. there. Yep. Yeah. It, it is funny how it's like back in the day. You could just be a jerk. Like now, now you're a racist jerk or a sexist jerk. There were, there was a time when you were just allowed to be a dick I mean, to everyone. I mean, look at Howard Stern. Yes, you could yeah. just be mean to everyone. And it didn't make you prejudiced. It just mean you were a bad person or you were a mean person, but you were mean to everyone, which somehow made you both a hero and a villain at the same time. That's a boring world we're headed for where everybody's pretending to be nice to you. Yeah. Like, it's like, I don't, yeah, like, I'm okay. Like, I, I, I mean, I, with people hating me, like, I'm okay with that. Like, it's all right. You don't have to pretend. You know, I, look, if he's a jerk, I, I mean, I and everybody knows it. I mean, they're obviously talking about it at work. Like, you know, like, um, quit. Strike, I'm just like, something. men used to go to war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now they work on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. And they yeah. cry. And they complain about it and they cry. <laughs> I mean, I, like, I wonder if it's like, uh, you hear a lot of the, like in the video game industry, like when, when they have to work crunch time, right? right. And then you're like, that's a big problem yeah. there because the, you're overworking people. They talk about like, or people at Marvel when they're like, uh, the Marvel animators are like, I haven't been home in three weeks <laughs> because they need to make Agatha... <laughs> coven of chaos as if anybody cares right. like uh, it's insane but the uh, the quit i guess it's the beauty of living here in this country just quit and try to find another job i'm not saying that that doesn't suck that that has to happen but it's it's on us to do so and uh, jimmy fallon sucks too so um, yeah i wanted to ask alex this is like totally unrelated but did something good come out of gamergate in your opinion oh god um <laughs> Only a couple of things, I would say. Because uh, it seems like with Comics Gate, they're in a really fortunate position because the new movies aren't making money, the right. new comics aren't making money, right. the indie comics are doing well. And then with gaming, it's way different because video games still like vastly outgross Hollywood movies mm -hmm. from big studios, right. and nothing really changed. Oh no, they're they're worse. They're worse than they game. were back then. Gaming journalism is worse than it was back yeah. then. Nothing. Nothing's really changed there. Like nowadays, the the only thing that they really acquiesced to, as far as our request, was disclosure statements in in uh, articles. Like, who are you propping up with this? How are you connected to yeah. them? Why are you writing about your best friend's games oh, and stuff? Uh, Feminist Frequency did shut down, so we've got that there going. There is that. There's a W. That's, and that, it only took nine years. Yes. <laughs> Might have happened anyway, but. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.